density is ultimately going to be a pretty significant component of that. It's completely out of scale. It's developed without any respect for the neighborhood around it. You can't say that it's bad, but I wouldn't ever say that it's great when it keeps communities down. So I moved here in maybe 2011, something like that. And essentially it was kind of right when I got here and started doing stuff is when it's been growing ever since then. Um, we're on Division Street here. This this was like not built at all when, when I moved here, this strip. Yeah, there was nothing, you know, you could park anywhere on Division. It was just, it was light and it's, it's very different now. My name is David Walski. I live in Portland, Oregon. I'm a digital marketing consultant. I've always been interested. I've always been an architectural enthusiast. I've always been someone interested in development, land use, and how people use and hopefully uh, engage with the built environment around them. When you see, we used to live off of Division and 38th, and when you see it, how that has transitioned, it's, it's completely out of scale. It's developed without any respect for the neighborhood around it. Uh, you can't, if you're a neighbor there, you can't even park in front of your own house anymore. Uh, and of course it shuts out all the light, uh, there's no sunlight, and architecturally it looks like it was just dropped from outer space. It's just completely, these are like Los Angeles scale buildings dropped on a little tiny street in southeast Portland. I think it's, a, it's an unfortunate thing and a lot of developers rushed in to take advantage of what was a loophole, essentially. Definitely when I first moved here was that caricature of Portland as not having very much economic opportunity. There weren't a ton of career type of positions and it was like everybody was a bartender or barista that I knew. Companies like ours move in here, there are more career positions that people can do and, and actually live. In order for someone to come in and buy, someone else must first sell. Fixing up old houses, putting in businesses where before there were empty storefronts. I think that's a good thing, but it's who's doing it and why are they doing it? And are they even folks from around here? I think one of the things that I find most disconcerting these days is how much of this development is backed by investors who are halfway around the world, who've never even been to Portland, who don't know what we've got. They just know that it's hot and they want a piece of the money. So by nature, the work I'm doing is very much in line with what happens in gentrification. So we did a big project in St. John's last year. It was a nine unit apartment building and it was in really, really bad shape uh, to the point that it made it really affordable to purchase and I think probably slipped under the radar of traditional developers. And us as a building company maybe what had a little bit more room to get that and be able to to do the work of fixing that up in the process of that you know we found we found a gun hidden in the ceiling there was a ton of heroin needles uh, everything was rotting the building really was just in it was rotting into the ground i think it had four of the nine units rented definitely the deal they had with the with the previous landlord was he never raised rent so i think the rents were in the like three four hundred dollar a month range and they never complained about the building rotting into the ground. So we bought it and gave a three month window, but had those remaining four tenants move out because you can't do the type of renovation that we needed to do on that with people there. It completely got ripped down to the studs to where you could just see through the building. You know, we worked on it for eight months. We did a, a, a really nice renovation and then the units came back on and they were a thousand to 1200 a month. The type of people that were paying a $400 rent, they were, they were not going to just be able to jump across the street to another place. It was like, dang, these people are going to be moving to a different neighborhood at the socioeconomic place that they're at. And that felt, that felt bad. Like that aspect of it felt bad. It's inevitable and growth is important. It's part of like a growing and changing society. But I can I wouldn't ever say that it's great when it keeps communities down and you're instead of 
serving the community that's in that neighborhood. You're just pushing them further east in this case. And, um, you know, people that have been living in their, in their homes and in their neighborhoods for a really long time, and then they're losing that. They're losing their small business. They're losing their corner stores. It's often said that our community is voiceless. But I don't, I don't agree with that. I feel like it's not that our community is voiceless, it's that our voices fall upon deaf ears. So we have a voice um, and we have a lot to say, but nobody wants to hear us. I feel like the city and the people behind this development and everything that's going on um, didn't find my, our community, my community worthy enough until a certain type of people started moving into the neighborhood. Now it feels like, oh, now they're worthy enough to have street signs and to have crosswalks and to have, um, you know, beautiful buildings. This um, community has a lot to give and they have a lot of strengths and they have a lot um, of intelligence and abilities that maybe aren't measurable in, a, in the tests and the, the college and level in that sense, but I feel like there's a lot that they have to give and offer and love in this community, but that um, it's not valued. And, it's, and it's, it's not valued and it's not seen as a strength until other people start moving into the neighborhood and now it's valued because it's apparent by the way that the city is choosing to improve the, na improve the neighborhood. But I think the challenge now is, as rising inequality is seen even right here in Portland, it's really hard to do. I mean, it used to be, you know, you were talking to about, you know, low and middle class folks, but they've really kind of gutted that part. Uh, and since everybody wants in now, where do you even start? And I don't, I don't think that I have like a magic pill for that or any remedy that's, that's comforting. I think that, uh, yeah, as the city changes and grows, um, you know that is that is that is sadly part of the deal, and I don't know how to say that and not sound callous. I mean, maybe the one silver lining that I would think is at least Portlanders are very aware of that—that that it isn't it isn't a blind, uh, just pro-growth place. That's like, hey, the more growth, the better. The the more we build, the better. But I don't think that there is a comforting thing and there's not there's not like a light at the end of the tunnel either of like oh yeah that's a temporary issue and it's going to get fixed as soon as this happens it's like that's that's happening and that's going to continue to happen as the as the city grows and changes and now it seems to be either there's nothing or there's six stories of might as well be in the pearl density with a lot of retail that isn't really helping out the neighborhood i think it can be done if everyone sets aside their politics and gets a little more focused on just solutions, human solutions. It's inevitable, but I would never agree with it fully being like it's a good thing if it's not benefiting everyone and it's only benefiting a, a certain few because that seems to be the overall um, way of life within the United States where um, there's all these really great things, there's all these really great opportunities, but it's never for everyone. It's only for a select few. And I feel like as a small, as a city and a, a community, we need to be pushing for um, those opportunities for everyone and not just for a select few because we're just reflecting the overall way of thinking and processes that have been in place for a really long time in the city.